Top of the day, beautiful people. Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Joy. Shalom. Shalom. Levine. Blessings. Blessings. All right, beautiful people. It is Sunday, Jan yeah, January 23rd, 2022. Today, it is day 12. We're reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets and of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1030. Today, we'll be reading Genesis 34, 35, and 36. And then we're going to pick up where we left off at in my big toe, chapter 11. All right, let me do this. I ain't do it yesterday. Hold on. Today's... Oh, reading. This is chapters 34 through 36. Copy it. And paste it over here. And then my big toe. Okay. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, Shema. Remember that Shema is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we're reading from the NLT version. A call for wholehearted commitment. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy, and you and your children and grandchildren must fear Yahuwah your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as Yahuwah, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, Yahuwah, our God, he is one God. And you must love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yahuwah your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give to you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You would draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you would eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful not to forget Yahuwah who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear Yahuwah your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must only use his name. You must not worship any other gods of the neighboring nations, for Yahuwah your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test Yahuwah your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of Yahuwah your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in Yahuwah's sight, so all will go well with you. 
Then you will enter and occupy the good land that Yahuwah swore to give to your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as Yahuwah said you would. In the future, your children will ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah our God has commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but Yahuwah brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. Yahuwah did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give to our ancestors. And Yahuwah our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so that he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. But we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands that Yahuwah our God has given us. All right, beautiful people. Let me change this. Let's go ahead and get to Genesis 34. I want to share something with y'all in a second. Hold on. Because we got to get to the bottom of this. Hold on. I got to check something. Gotta make sure. Hold on, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, y'all. So I was reading more of, well, I actually finished listening to it. I, I ordered the book, but it ain't got here yet. And I got the um the downloaded uh Kindle version. And but I've been listening to it for the last three days. It's one of the um ancient Sumerian texts that has been translated by um an author, um Zachariah Sitchin, right? So I was listening to it, and mind you, I'm a researcher. I go into everything with an open mind, just pulling information. What I can use, I use. What I can't use, I set it to the side, right? I don't necessarily chuck it right away, but I'll set the portion that I don't understand just to the side, just for the time being, until I can further verify and clarify if it is indeed not useful at all, right? So there's a lot of things I set to the side. I eat a lot of different um, videos that I've seen about certain things that people talking about. They kind of using them as scare tactics and all this. So, you know, I listen to it. I was like, okay, that sounds like a bunch of garbage to me. You know, but I'm not going to completely count it out. I just push it because I'm sure if it has any kind of credibility to it or not necessarily credibility, you know, whatever it is, I figure soon enough I'll come across it if and when I need it. Right. So with that being said, I do a lot of research. I check into the NASA website, and we know they're known for shenanigans sometimes. You know, they're, they're faux pas with their videos with outer space and all of that. You know, I, I've seen all those things. I looked into it. I'm like, yeah, you know. Then I've seen some of the things where they come back and correct it. Yes, this was a doctored photo. This was a doctored video. And they'll explain why they had to doctor it or whatever, right? So I've seen a lot of them. I ain't going to say I've seen all of them, but I, I've seen a few. And so when I go back while I'm reading uh, or listening to this ancient Sumerian text, it's 14 tablets, this particular one. I'm going to share with y'all because I realized yesterday somebody else has um, somebody else has uploaded it to YouTube. So I'm going to share the um, I'm going to share the link with y'all today for this so y'all can take a listen to it. Right. But I, in this particular one that I'm going to share with y'all, I think it has enough of what we read as scripture going through it for it to be considered. <laughs> and I'm like, I should really go through here and read this. I really, and I'm really debating if I'm right after Genesis, if I'm going to bring it in and read it. And I say right after Genesis, the Enuma Elish girls on my list. I came across that yesterday. Look. <laughs> Came across it yesterday. I, I kid you not, Joy. It's on my list. It's on my list. I ain't gotten to it yet. Listen, but this particular one, it has so much from Genesis in it, from the book of Enoch in it, a lot of what I've read in Jasher in it, Jubilees, Lindsay, Yah, Shalom, Shalom, Yahuwah is one. Shalom. 
But I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know what? Something ain't right. <laughs> now, say something ain't right with my thinking about something ain't right. Because if we know that the Bible, right, the Bible is the baby of all these religions out here. Like, it is, it's the newcomer on the block. Right. It's the new kid on the block. The most recent one out of all the other ancient texts. Right now, we know that it's been pieced together from different, more ancient manuscripts. But those more ancient manuscripts seem also to be listed in this more ancient Sumerian manuscript. That was preserved quite well. Like it was, it was some stuff was missing, but for the most part, it was preserved quite well. And so going through this particular uh, book, which has all the 14 uh, tablets in it, I'm just like, hold up. And admit, it really made me stop and think about a lot. Of what we used to believe, a lot about what we still believe, how it brings a lot of clarity to some of the stories where we can get little bits and pieces. If we just look in other texts that they've named something else, but with all of these scattered pieces being in this more ancient, older text, it has me really wondering, right? So as I read through it or listen to it, like I got the book coming in to be here by like Tuesday. Do I say Tuesday? Tuesday. But I don't know with all the snow now if it's going to get here by Tuesday. And I think we might be done with, well, we're definitely going to be done with Genesis soon. So what I decided was that I'm I'm almost 100% certain at this point that I'm going to read this because <laughs> it's translated to English. I'm almost certain that I'm going to read this simply to let you hear Simply to let you hear. I ain't saying you got to change what you believe, but I want you to hear exactly how much. Okay, Alicia, I call you. I want you to hear how much of what we have in the Bible is actually in this ancient Sumerian text. Now, also in this ancient Sumerian text will be some things that's going to be off putting to you at first, but. If you've been paying attention to what NASA has been doing or our government has been doing, remember how they created this whole space force? Like we thought, when I saw that, I'm like, get out of here. You, you got to be kidding. You've created a space force. You've created a space force. The government of the United States has created a space force. I thought this was completely ridiculous, right? But I didn't quite chuck it. I'm like, okay. Maybe there are some sane minds somewhere within the government. <laughs> so it had me, you know, me being prior military, you know, so I, I look into certain documents and I go finding government documents that have been released for public, you know, consumption or whatever. And clearly I know once they've been released, they've been scrubbed, right? And it removes portions and sections of information, right? That they don't really want the public to know just yet. But also... In the wake of the um, the panorama <laughs> that's going on all across the world, where they're making you get this uh, elixir that they shoot into your veins, right, y'all? I don't I don't want to say like a cold word that's gonna get my channel banned because I'm already walking on eggshells with YouTube. Um, with the with the documents that were passed for the panorama and all the uh, regulations and stuff that was released with the, you go look at it. I'm, I'm going to share, I'm going to share some stuff with y'all within that document where it's talking about the panorama that's going on that a lot of people have passed from in the last few years, just in case you didn't catch what I'm saying, right? The, the, you know, where they make us wear the mask. Okay. So now we're on the same page. Now y'all know what the panorama is. Listen, so with that document that it was supposed to just been talking about the panorama, there was sections in there that talks about UFOs, right? And so I'm just like, how inconsistent of you. We're supposed to be talking about getting people well and how to nurse people back to health on the earth, but you slyly 
interject things about UFOs and what you're going to do and all these things and, and revealing things to the public about UFOs, right? They don't call them UFOs. I mean, you'll find it under UFOs, but they call them um, U... 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 U-F-A-C-S. I forget, but it's another term they use where they replace UFO. They call it U-A-F... Uh, unidentified aerial flying something. I forget. I'll, I'll share it too. So I started thinking about all of this. Yeah. Lindsay said, yes, I was in the Air Force when that was being planned. I can tell you much about that. Yo, so I'm, I'm looking at all of this stuff, right? I'm looking at all of this stuff. And I'm like, okay, there has to be a link somewhere. And I found that there was a common link, believe it or not, in religion. So I'm just like... But how does that make sense? Like, what are we missing? You know, so me, I'm I'm just going to keep prying at stuff and just looking at stuff. Shayla, hey, girl, hey. I'm going to keep looking at stuff until I find something that helps me link all this random, that this information that seems random, not so random together. Right? And so I come across by help of my wonderful uncle. He said, you need to check out this certain author. So I go and I start looking into this certain author, right? And some of the things that this certain author has brought out, I have already come across in other things in my all my random pieces of information. But he seems to bring a lot of this stuff together. And a lot of the religious stuff that I've been researching as well, right? And me. Because I've read a lot of religious books and the Bible and the missing pieces of the Bible and the Parker film. We read them here. Just imagine what, just imagine how I felt, right? Imagine how I felt when I read these or listened to this ancient Sumerian text that has a lot of the beloved stories that I've come to love so much all up and through it. I mean, Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We got uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Although they're not lame, Sodom and Gomorrah, but as you listen to it, you can clearly tell that this is Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? What about Adam and Eve? Everybody know that wasn't their name, right? But them. And more details about the garden. And let's not forget Enoch and Methuselah. Just, just, just imagine how you think I felt when I come across some of my most beloved characters, they've given them different names, but it's close enough. And the stories are similar to where I figured it out. I'm like, wait a minute. Now, had I not read and listened to the Bible as much as I have since 2013, I may not have been able to catch it. But I was able to catch it really quick. That's what, that's what got me through listening to it in the last three days, every bit of it. And I started listening to some sections over again. I'm just like... Hmm. Something ain't right about this. Now, at this point, I absolutely know that there is a creator, right? I still refer to him as Yah, right? But I do know that male and female energy comes out of the creator, right? I.e., we can see it. We can still see that there's, there's truth in some of what we believe, right? There's things that we can test, which we've been talking about. We clearly know that there is another realm that communicates with us, right? We all know that. Can we all agree on that, right? We can all agree on that. But also in this ancient Sumerian text, they also do bring light to a overall creator. Although this overall creator is mentioned, it's mentioned throughout it. It's really giving them more details about the actual account of what actually took place here on this earth. Right. And so if you go into different areas, different cultures, you will see some of these things that's all together in this ancient Sumerian text. So I want to share this with y'all. I don't know if you want to listen to it all before we get to it. But there are two different versions. The ones that I'm going to share with you on YouTube, I started listening to her after I finished reading the other one that uh, Zachariah Sitchin 
uh, translated. But with his, it's a little bit longer because he has a synopsis before you get to each tablet. It's 14 tablets. And this um, is said to be a... Um, um, a first-hand view of someone that was here, right? And you've probably, if you've done any kind of research online, you may have heard of this name, Inky, right? You probably hear it in um, religious fables, fairy tales, and stuff like that. And I, I specifically said fables and fairy tales with this, this god named Inky, right? And so if you're familiar with that 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 fairy tale or fictional character when you actually listen to this account Enlil and Inky yes if you're actually familiar with those names and you're familiar with this account and you're familiar with the stories in the Bible anybody with a little bit of common sense would pause and stop to think wait a minute So we have this let let just for the for the just for the heck of it and for the sake of conversation, right? At least in my studies up to this point, when I've heard these names, it's like, oh, this is a fable, this is a fairy tale, right? This was like some like Greek, not necessarily Greek, but this is like ancient mythology, right? Ancient myth ancient mythology. Okay. Yet when I go read this ancient mythology, right? Y'all didn't, didn't told us it was ancient mythology. Okay, boom. I ain't, ain't going to argue with you about that. Okay, you told me it was a story from the beginning. Thank you for warning me. But yet, you come back and you give me another document that you rename, slightly change the names of the characters involved and the God that they worship, but you tell me that this is real. When I can clearly tell, first of all, this ancient text that you stole all these words and named the Bible, this more ancient text, even more ancient than ancient Egypt. It, where ancient Egypt got everything written in hieroglyphs and stuff like that to where the ancient Sumerian text is, is written in ancient cuneiform, right? A more ancient text that they wrote in. It's called cuneiform. Go look it up. So, you mean to tell me First of all, you didn't already let me know that Inkin Enlil, right? The 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 two look at them husband and wife, husband and wife, right? You've already told me that they were made up. That that's what you're telling me. You first you came, you told me this was mythology. To, we're just gonna tell you some good stories, but then you come back and you give me a Bible and tell me this is true. But when I go and read this mythology i find out that this book you gave me and told me was true was taken directly from this ancient cuneiform sumerian text now i got a problem if you told me this was false but you're telling me this is real how sway how does that make sense because if you told me this was fake then this should be fake too because i can clearly tell that everything that's written in here whether you call it the torah of the most high that you've taken it directly from a more ancient text that you come and you told me it's fake. Mm -mm. It's just a good story. Something ain't right about this, right? So I got some major problems with some major people. Not y'all, because I clearly know that there is a creator of everything. I ain't got no problems with him. I ain't got no problems with him at all. I've experienced him. I talk to him, him on a daily basis, right? Some people say her, but... This, when you go into here, when you got some people waking up, God is a woman. Nope, God is a man. You're going to see the source of all of these scattered views of different people who are waking up. Now, according to this more ancient text, I would have to say a lot of the things that I hear people arguing about, they don't necessarily know themselves, but you got a piece of the puzzle and that little piece that you got is right. And you got a piece of the puzzle. And that piece that you got is right. Right? Everybody is right. Well, not everything about everybody is right. Stay with me. But there are certain things to where all of these different nations of people are saying that I can clearly tell originate 
from this ancient Sumerian text, right? You can even find it in the, 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 the Babylonia uh, tablets and stuff as well. Everybody is pulling their information from a more ancient civil, civilization, the Sumerians. And it was the Sumerians who were the kings. Remember these kings that they worship as gods? Oh my gee, when we find out about these kings and that, and the, the, the power, let's say the powers that they really had. Now it makes a lot of things that you read in the Bible make sense. Clearly we could tell it if you read any part of Jasher, right? Okay. Clearly something else was going on, right? Even a lot of the stuff from Legends of the Jews, we can clearly tell something else was going on that we, it's not clicking just yet with us, right? But all of that seems to click in this more ancient text that all of these religions have pulled their information from and created their own holy book, right? Now, that's not to negate some of the information that we've clearly tested and tried in these ancient books, whether you, I don't care where you at, right? We're just more familiar with the Bible. There are principles in there that are clearly true, and we've had enough interactions with other worldly entities, with the creator himself, even when we pray prayers answer, to know that clearly, even if all the words are wrong, we know that there is a God that exists, right? We know that. So the purpose of doing all this is not to discredit him because surely he lives, <laughs> right? There is a creator. Surely he lives. But what we want to do, we want to get rid of all the shenanigans and all the mumble jumbo writing and everything, at least track it back to its origins. So we're not walking in ignorance, right? Remember, we're not just worshiping y'all in spirit, but we're worshiping him in truth and in spirit, and I think by reading this ancient Sumerian text will help bring to light a lot of things and it'll squash a lot of different arguments that some people have been having, right? Now, like I said earlier, there are going to be some terms in here that may be off-putting to some people simply because of some videos that have run rampant through YouTube, right? Hence, I'll give you the name of one, Nibiru, right? I'm like, what well, dog on it? So this is where Nibiru originated from right people giving you things prophecies that they're giving you mind you that they told you the lord and told you i'm like i'm glad i read <laughs> because the lord ain't told you nothing <laughs> either you didn't want to read this ancient sumerian text or you didn't listen to somebody that's done read this ancient sumerian text and you decided to give a prophecy about what you heard, right? And so when you go into NASA, they talk about this planet X. And they they say, well, this is not Nubiru. We're not saying that it, it, NASA and the government is ever so sly, right? They, they're saying, well, Nubiru, Nubiru exists, but what we're seeing is not Nubiru. There is a planet X. And I've even gone through, that's, I've looked. That's why I was running late this morning because I was looking to a couple of these articles and stuff and I lost track of time while I'm sending things to myself so I can remember to come back to this, go back and check this, go back to this article. And 60 Minutes had done a couple different things. So I was looking into all that. I was like, pull myself together. Let's go get this video started. So looking into that and then I know it by now everybody has heard of the Anunnaki. Matter of fact, I think about two years ago, I mentioned the Anunnaki because I came across black people talking about the Anunnaki. And I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> and I just kind of, I joked on them a little bit and then I left it alone. I never mentioned it again, right? But also in this ancient Sumerian text is the term Anunnaki or Anunnaki, depending on who you are, how you pronounce it. They pronounce it Anunnaki or Anunnaki, right? Listen, listen, my G. If you have been on YouTube long enough, and if you go through, listen to some of these people's videos, and I've listened to quite a lot of people's videos, just trying to pull information and trying to make sense of all of this. I'm like, okay, who is the Anunnaki? Even going to the Discovery Channel, looking at the videos that they've done on ancient civilizations and stuff, when they talk about the Sumerians and the Anunnaki and stuff, and the prophecies of the Anunnaki, and a lot of the prophecies of the church, my G, what's going to really piss you off is you're going to find out that these were probably <laughs> I was like boy this it was like one of my old pastors said he said 
this would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. And so I'm listening to this. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> so a lot of these prophecies and stuff and people retwist, I guess, for their for whatever reason that they do. These are not prophet. Well, OK, I give them this. They are prophecies of an ancient God, but not the God you would care to believe it is. Right. And once we read through this, it's going to close a lot of these loops and these open holes that even we have still kind of had some questions about. But now, with all my random, not so random pieces of information, I realize the source of all of this. I ain't going to quite call it garbage yet. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if y'all did all of this to tell us that this was mythology, why would you take that same information distribute it to the masses of people and then begin to teach them that this is true right and it's almost like they're they're setting up that boogeyman or that wall or the imaginary line don't come that, that imaginary gun line don't come across this line i dare you to come across this line doing all of that it sets up this imaginary line that they teach us not to cross because that is mythology. It's it's no that's if you want a good story, then you know, yeah, but why really? Deal with something a little more real, right? And hence we have the Bible, the holy scriptures, right? The holy Torah, right? That almost seems like blasphemy to me. Because of some of my most beloved characters and my most beloved, and I'm saying beloved, I know it's beloved, but I'm, I'm purposely using the word, word wrong. Some of my most beloved characters, it has completely shocked me that I have found some of them in the ancient texts with different names and a, a broader story about what happened. So I think it's incumbent. I feel like it is my duty at this point to read this to y'all out loud right after we get done reading Genesis. Y'all have to hear this. <laughs> y'all absolutely have to hear this. And then you take it from there. I ain't just going to leave you hanging, but I'm going I'm to keep adding in what I found. Like we just, we got to, we got to unmuddy the waters here, right? We got to un muddy the waters so with that being said like i've i've listened to all of the tablets i've listened to all of the tablets and a couple of the tablets i've listened to twice right and i clearly know that i'm like Pff. if they was gonna give it to us why they give it to us chopped and screwed like this right yo joy Pff. i wish we was done reading genesis today so we can start reading it today. But I'm going to give y'all the link. I'm going to give y'all the link when we're done uh, for the one that's recorded on YouTube. Now, the recording on YouTube, a female does it. She has a really clear voice. But she didn't include the synopsis from the original translator, which I think is helpful. It gives you like a synopsis and an overview of what's coming. Right? But I... I'm going to read it from the original translator's uh, version. But you can also get that as well. But you're going to have to download it from Amazon. Um, you have to download it from Amazon, order the book, or whatever. I, didn't, I got all of them. I got the audio. I got the, the Kindle version. And my hardback, hopefully, it'll be here, like it said, by Tuesday. But because of the snow, I'm thinking maybe Wednesday, Thursday, hopefully. So when we get it, we're going to read it. And if my hardback ain't here, by the time we're done with Genesis in a few days, I'm going to just use my electronic version. All right. So I'm going to give you, it's called The Lost Book of Inky. The Lost Book of Inky. E-N-K-I. Right. And if you're, like I said, if you're familiar with all the Bible stories and all of the Book of Enoch, remember the Watchers? You know who the Watchers are? They they change they change the name. They change the name. You know who the Watchers are in the ancient Sumerian text? They're the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are the Watchers, right? So that's why I said if you're familiar with the biblical or extra biblical text, you will recognize these people in the ancient Sumerian text. 
Okay, the sons of God that came down and had sex with the human women, all of that. There's a really expanded story on the watchers or on the... <laughs> yes, Dana. Dana says, so in summary, are you saying that the Bible slash Torah are stories from the Sumerian text? That's exactly what I'm telling y'all. That's exactly what I'm telling y'all. The Bible slash the Torah are stories from the ancient Sumerian text, right? And this is just a portion of it. I've got just about this whole, this author's, his his whole library. And he's actually done world travels and given tours and stuff over in the the the, the eastern part of the world, right? Over there where they say Israel and all them places over there, he's done tours. Do a little bit of research on this guy. He's passed away now. In 2010, he died, right? Zachariah Sitchin. But, um, um... He 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 has this series. It's called the um the uh it's like a it's like twelve twelve books. What is it called? Oh my gosh. The the Earth the Earth Chronicles. That's what it is, the Earth Chronicles. And I believe it's it's twelve different books and they're each named something else. But I wanna say I don't quote me on it yet, but from what I've read already there's like a progressive building of the story of what happens through all 12. I ain't saying y'all got to go get all 12 and read all 12. That is not what I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all what I found out and what I've started to uncover and read. And I also checked into the author. Now, clearly, when you go looking into different people, you got people that just going to go up against you. Well, I don't know. This is true. We're going to debunk him or and all this or whatever. But I really, what credentials do you have to debunk the stuff that we can kind of see that is credible, right? Some of the resources and stuff, we see that his credible resources are more credible than your debunking video and what you're trying to tell me, right? And I I think if I hadn't personally been in the military and been involved in some of the things in the government that I have been involved in, I would probably... and. Out, yeah, I would probably lean more on the side of maybe all of this is a hoax, right? Because my information, my understanding would clearly be incomplete to even say anything about this particular topic, right? I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of stuff. There is a whole lot of pieces of this puzzle that I did not originally think were pieces of this puzzle, right? But we're going to read it. And then y'all, y'all, y'all tell me. Y'all tell me what y'all think, right? Yeah, I mean, y'all really tell me what y'all think when we go through this. Because I'm like, I don't know whether to be pissed or extremely excited about this. But I'm just like, this is very interesting. This is very interesting to say the, the at the very least, at the very least. It should get you going to look into a little bit more, right? Okay. I did not plan on saying all of that. But it was just burning deep down in my shot on now. I was like, I gotta tell them. They gotta hear this for themselves. Like you wouldn't believe it unless you read it. You, you, you just <sighs> let's get started, y'all. Let's get started. Yo, this is J uh Joy. Yo. <sighs> Look, I'm almost so glad to be done with reading Genesis <laughs> so I can get to it. Genesis 34. Look. And it's Sunday, so we may we may be here like an hour and a half because we already have 40, 40 minutes. <laughs> Me doing my explanation. Like I said, I'm going to share it with y'all, right? So y'all can go through and listen. You can get the original, whatever. But we're going we're gonna to read through it. We're going to read through it. Okay, just in case those ones that can't afford it or you may live someplace where Amazon may not deliver to you or whatever. I don't know, but we're going to read it here. Okay, Genesis chapter 34, Revenge Against Shechem. One day, Dinah, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince, Shechem, son of Hamar, the Hivite, saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her. But then he fell in love with her and he tried to win her affection with tender words. He said to his father, Hamar, get me this young girl. I want to marry her. Soon, Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter, Dinah. But since his sons were out in the fields herding his livestock, he said nothing until they returned. Hamor, 
Shechem's father, came to discuss the matter with Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what happened. They were shocked and furious that their sister had been raped. Shechem had done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, something that should never be done. Hamer tried to speak with Jacob and his sons. My son Shechem is truly in love with your daughter, he said. Please let him marry her. In fact, let's arrange other marriages too. You give us your daughters for our sons, and we will give you our daughters for your sons, and you may live among us. The land is open to you. Settle here and trade with us, and feel free to buy property in the area. Then Shechem himself spoke to Dinah's father and brothers. Please be kind to me and let me marry her, he begged. I will give you whatever you ask. No matter what dowry or gift you demand, I will gladly pay it. Just give me the girl as my wife. But since Shechem had defiled their sister, Dinah, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shechem and his father Hamor. They said to him, we couldn't possibly allow this because you're not circumcised. It would be a disgrace for our sister to marry a man like you. But there's a solution. <clears throat> if every man among you will be circumcised like we are, then we will give you our daughters and we'll take your daughters for ourselves. We will live among you and become one people. But if you don't agree to be circumcised, we will take her and be on our way. Hamer and his son Shechem agreed to their proposal. Shechem wasted no time in acting on this request, for he wanted Jacob's daughter desperately. Shechem was a highly respected member of his family, and he went with his father Hamor to present this proposal to the leaders at the town gate. These men are our friends, they said. Let's invite them to live here among us and trade freely. Look, the land, the land is large enough to hold them. We can take their daughters as wives and let them marry ours. <clears throat> But they will consider staying here and becoming one people with us only if all our men are circumcised, just as they are. But if we do this, all their livestock and possessions will eventually be ours. Come, let's agree to their terms and, let's, and let them settle here among us. So all the men in the town council agreed with Hamor and Shechem, and every male in the town was circumcised. But three days later, when their wounds were still sore, Two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, who were Dinah's full brothers, took their swords and entered the town without opposition. Then they slaughtered every male there, including Hamor and his son Shechem. They killed them with their swords, then took Dinah from Shechem's house and returned to their camp. Meanwhile, the rest of Jacob's sons arrived. Finding the men slaughtered, they plundered the town because their sister had been defiled there. They seized all the flocks and of uh, they seized all the flocks and herds and donkeys, everything they could lay their hands on, both inside the town and outside in the fields. They looted all their wealth and plundered their houses. They also took all their little children and wives and led them away as captives. Afterward, Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have ruined me. You've made me stink among all the people of this land, among all the Canaanites and the Perizzites. We are so few that they would join forces and crush us. I will be ruined and my entire household will be wiped out. But why should we but why should we let him treat our sister like a prostitute? They retorted angrily. Next chapter, Genesis chapter 35. Then God said to Jacob, "Get ready and move to Bethel and settle there." Build an altar there to the God who, who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob told everyone in his household, get rid of all your pagan idols, purify yourselves and put on clean clothing. We are now going to Bethel where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all their pagan idols and earrings and he buried them under the great tree near Shechem. As they set out, a terror from God spread over the people in all the towns of that area, so no one attacked Jacob's family. Eventually, Jacob and his household arrived at Luz, also called Bethel in Canaan. Jacob built an altar there and named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel, because God had appeared to him there when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Boy, I tell you, this is such a scrubbed version. <laughs> 
soon after this, Rebecca's old nurse, Deborah, died. She was buried beneath the oak tree in the valley below Bethel. Ever since, the tree has been called Elon Bakuth, which means Oak of Weeping. Now that Jacob had returned from Padan Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants, and I will give you the land I once gave to Abraham and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. Then God went up from the place where he had spoken to Jacob. Jacob set up a stone pillar to mark the place where God had spoken to him. Then he poured the wine over it as an offering to God, and he anointed the pillar with olive oil. And Jacob named the place Bethel, which means house of God, because God had spoken to him there. The deaths of Rachel and Isaac. Leaving Bethel, Jacob and his clan moved on toward Ephrath, but Rachel went into labor while they were still while they were still some distance away. Her labor pains were intense. After a very hard delivery, the midwife finally exclaimed, Don't be afraid, you have another son. Rachel was about to die, but with her last breath she named the baby Ben Oni, which means son of my sorrow. The baby's father, however, called him Benjamin which means son of my right hand. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Jacob set up a stone monument over Rachel's grave and it can be seen there to this day. Then Jacob traveled on and camped beyond Migdal Edgar. While he was living there, Reuben had intercourse with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Jacob soon heard about it. These are the names of the 12 sons of Jacob. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servants, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. These are the names of the sons who were born to Jacob at Padan Aram. So Jacob returned to his father Isaac in Mamre, which is near Kiriath Arba, now called Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac both lived as foreigners. Isaac lived for 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died at an ripe old age, joining his ancestors in death. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Last chapter for the day, Genesis chapter 36, the descendants of Esau. This is the account of the, the descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. Esau married two young women from Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, and granddaughter of Zibion, the Hivite. He also married his cousin, Bazemath, who was a daughter of Ishmael and a sister of Neoboth. Adi gave birth to a son named Eliphaz for Esau. Bazemath Bez, gave birth to a son named Ruel. Oholibama gave birth to sons named Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. All these sons were born to Esau in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his children, and his entire household, along with his livestock and cattle, all the wealth he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and moved away from his brother Jacob. There was not enough land to support them both because of all the livestock and possessions they had acquired. So Esau, also known as Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of Esau's descendants, the Edomites, who lived in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife, Adah, and Ruel, the son of Esau's wife, Bazemath. The descendants of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Getam, and Kenaz. Timnah, the concubine of Esau's son, Eliphaz, gave birth to a son named Amalek. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. 
These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Bazemath. Esau also had sons through Aholibamah, the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion. Their names were Jeush, Jam, and Korah. These are the descendants of Esau who became the leaders of various clans. The descendants of Esau's oldest sons, Eliphaz, became the leaders of clans of Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Eliphaz. All these were descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Esau's son, Ruel, became the leaders of the clans of Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Ruel. All these were descendants of Esau's wife, Bazemath. The descendants of Esau and his wife, Aholibamah, became the leaders of the clans of Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the clan leaders who descended from Esau's wife, Oholibama, the daughter of Anna. These are the clans descended from Esau, also known as Edom, identified by their clan leaders. Original peoples of Edom. These are the names of the tribes that descended from Seir the Horite. They lived in the land of Edom, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan, and Dishan. These are the Horite clan leaders, the descendants of Seir who lived in the land of Edom. The descendants of Lotan were Huri and Hemam. Lotan's sister was named Timnah. The descendants of Shobal were Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The descendants of Zibion were Ai and Anna. This is the Anna who discovered the hot springs in the wilderness while he was grazing his father's donkeys. The descendants of Anna were his son, Dishon, and his daughter, Oholibama. The descendants of Dishon were Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kuran. <clears throat> the descendants of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Achan. The descendants of Dishan were Uz and Aran. So these were the leaders of the Horite clans, <clears throat> Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The Horite clans are named after their clan leaders who lived in the land of Seir, the rulers of Edom. <clears throat> these are the kings who ruled in the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled Edom from his city of Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Basra, became king in his place. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Timnites became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, became king in his place and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who defeated the Midianites in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samla from the city of Mashkarah became king in his place. When Samla died, Shaul from the city of Rehoboth on the river became king in his place. When Shaul died, Baal Hanan son of Akbor became king in his place. When Baal Hanan son of Akbor died, Hadad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Pau. His wife Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred and granddaughter of Mezeh. Zahab. These are the names of the leaders of the clans descended from Esau, who lived in the places named for them Timnah, Alva, Jetheth, Oholibama, Elah, Penan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Migdiel, and, em and Eram. These are the leaders of the clans of Edom, listed according to their settlements in the land they occupied. They all descended from Esau, the ancestor of the Edomites. <clears throat> who was the great nation of Abraham lineage? Who was the great nation of Abraham lineage with Hagar? Yeah, Ishmael. Ishmael was, according to the Bible. <laughs> Look, y'all. My mind is just blown right now. Look. Also, when we get into reading it, you gonna see y'all gonna y'all gonna hear a lot about Noah. Like the account, when I tell you the accounts are put together, like we have the Bible and the scattered pieces, like the Book of Enoch and Jasher and Jubilees, like all of these pieces are separated, and the Apocrypha, all of this is together. 
in the ancient Sumerian text. They've just taken it, split it up, gave it to different people. Hmm, here's a piece, here's a piece, here's a piece. Like somebody said, um, it's like uh all 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 our pieces of the puzzle are up are being given back to us at this point, right? Okay. <clears throat> y'all y'all really gonna enjoy it. Y'all really gonna enjoy it. Or I don't know, enjoy it, but at least it'll enlighten you. Was there another 12 tribes under Ishmael? Well, uh, how many sons did Ishmael have? Um, I don't know if it was 12, but he had just as many sons. And there were, just like Jacob, the, the 12 sons of Jacob, there were the sons of Ishmael, right? But they called them, um, they called them, they call them what they call them today. Over in the eastern part of the world, um, darn it, it's right on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, it, it tells you in the scripture that they will also be royalty. Like, um, what's the what's, what they call them over there, y'all? <laughs> but yeah, they had they actual have they have like um, it's like royalty terms in like an army, like a. They're all leaving at this moment. But like like in England, like they have like dukes and stuff like that. It's names like that that they have for Ishmael's sons. And but yeah, there were there were tribes. They they were tribes just like the tribes or the sons of Jacob. There were the tribes of Ishmael or um the sons of Ishmael, right? And they got them all split up because they called them um, Muslims or whatever, practicing Islam to where they got you over here, the other ones, in Christianity, so to speak, or whatever. But, you know, Uncle Nathaniel, peaceful greetings. Morning, Linda. Okay, so let's get to chapter 11. Where we at? 57 minutes. <clears throat> so we'll read... Um, We'll get through a few of these chapters today. As soon as I get done, I promise y'all, as soon as I get done today, if my husband don't come down here and ask for something. But as soon as we get done, I'm going to put the links to the stuff. So if you want to start listening to it, but we'll, we're going to start reading it ourselves from the ancient Sumerian text in a few days when we get done with Genesis. Y'all just, y'all just, y'all just listen to it. <laughs> just listen to it. Y'all going to be quite amazed. You're welcome, Joy. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 11. On page 89 of My Big Toe. And it, what we're learning does not negate the truth that we're learning about our bodies, y'all. Remember, we're going to keep it all together. We got to test it. We're testing what's true and what's not true. This is actual physical testing we can do with our own bodies, right? It'll connect us to the source of the true creator, right? That's how we're coming across a lot of this information that we done be kept in the dark about. Okay, so... All of this ties together. Even if you still don't quite understand it, just kind of stay in there so we bring the pieces together, right? Trying to get us all working knowledge so we can actually, okay, I'm not just sitting listening. Okay, I can test this. Okay. All right, y'all with me? I know y'all with me because y'all still here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 11. If this is Tuesday, I must be in physical matter reality. Meanwhile, back at the lab, Dennis and I were putting in about 15 to 20 hours a week after I would get home from the lab, often at 2 or 3 in the morning. I would lie in bed practicing what I had learned or continue the eve or con I'm sorry. I would lie in bed practicing what I had learned or continuing that evening's experiments. After 2 or 3 hours of sleep, I would get up and go to work. <clears throat> The evenings, I didn't go out to the lab. I would continue experimenting after everyone else fell asleep until a few hours before getting up and going to work. I was putting in 45 hours a week studying altered states and the larger reality while simultaneously putting in 50 hours a week at my day job and raising a family. My son, Eric, was about five years old at the time. Like most kids at that age, he had frequent, spontaneous, out-of-body experiences. O-O-B-E is the acronym for out-of-body experiences. <clears throat> we would go out-of-body together. I would go by and join him. We would have a blast. 
One time we were exploring the oceans together when a huge whale approached us. As our bodies slipped easily through the whale, Eric's head, for some reason, bumped against each of its ribs, one after the next. It frightened him a little. Typically, we did not interact with our surroundings. We came back immediately. Eric usually had total and clear recall of our nightly adventures. We will often discuss them in the morning. It was fun. It was great fun for the both of us. Now, mind you, he's talking about <clears throat> he's already had been he already had been testing with the out of body experiences and he know they're true right and so clearly we know that children they are they are still they're still kind of like linked to these things in a younger age not that they're ever not linked to it but it happens more frequently because they they have that childlike nature and it's like let's go and they don't they're not adults where you got to overthink things and try and figure it out they just go Dana said, <clears throat> one question, one question I had when I woke up, if we can see the future, manifest what we need, et cetera, why would we need or trust Yah, especially if people can use these same powers without being in a relationship with Yah? Ha, 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 ha. Well, first of all, <clears throat> the great creator created you, right? Created you with just just like him right and if our creator is a creator is a god right and he created us just like him that would what essentially make us gods right stick with me but we have to go through school we have to learn about these things right learn how to operate not saying that we would ever distance ourselves away from our creator oh i'm a creator i don't need you anymore no my g it's just like raising children right because what do you think they're going to do when they get older? They're going to kind of repeat the process that you did. But there's a training period. Everybody must go through school. We're never going to. Now, some people, but that would that would be labeled as black magic <clears throat> in so many words. When you learn how to do these things and then you just, I don't need you anymore. I know how to do this. That would, it, you cut your own self off doing that. I would say you still need a relationship with the creator because our education never really ends, right? He's teaching us how to become like him. We were already created and fashioned in his image, right? And we're not ones that don't need that don't need our source of power because everything we have comes from him, right? I'm just saying, as we learn about this, it'll it'll make more sense, right? Especially if your heart is in the right place. I'm not saying that yours is not, but some people's like, oh, I can do things and I can do things to other people and they get off track, which is why a lot of time they're cut off from a lot of stuff that they could do. And if they can do it and if they're using it, I would say on the wrong side of love, that same power ends up consuming them and it takes them to an early grave. And I say that simply because of other information that I have that I have not really brought out here yet that I under, that I kind of understand a little bit, right? So it's not like that we don't ever need to be in a relationship with him. It's like, I liken it to this. It's like growing up and moving out of your parents' house. You don't completely disregard your parents for the rest of your, for the rest of your life because you move out of their house, right? That's, that's, that's not how this works, right? Although some people do. Although some people do, <clears throat> and that would kind of put them on the other side of love, so to speak, if that makes any kind of sense. But just like we grew up under the tutelage of our parents or our caregivers, guardians, whoever, when we become of age, we're kind of like given the freedom to go out there and explore the world ourselves. Not completely forget what we were taught when we were children and we were still under the tutelage of our scene masters, i.e. mom and dad or big mom, whoever you grew up with right now that we're out there on our own it's not like that we're really out there on our own because we're never out there on our own for real for real right because still the creator is there and the whole um the whole process is actually leading you back to him right we are mighty ones but he is the almighty one no one is greater i like that obedience y'all i like that i like how i explained that yeah so it's never like 
I, I just I see how people look at it that way, but that's not the road I choose to take, right? Just like you have all the now, I, y'all. I completely understand this now. <laughs> Reading through the Sumerian text and what was happening with the different nations worshiping the multiple gods, because there were actual what we would call today demigods. They were literally the offspring of angels and um, um, uh, humans, right? So they had particular powers and they they lived, which also helped me understand a little bit about Pharaoh. When I found out about Pharaoh, remember how when Egypt was destroyed, but I later found out that this same Pharaoh that was alive and present during the time where the children of Israel were um, they were released from their bondage. This same Pharaoh was also the king of Nineveh. Remember when Jonah showed up? That was the same Pharaoh, according to the manuscripts I read. And I was like, wait, hold on, I'm tripping. Let me go back. I think I missed something. But no, that was the same exact Pharaoh because it tells you in another manuscript that after the calamities happened with um Egypt, the plagues and stuff, and after his whole army had drowned in the sea, everybody drowned except for him. After his entire army had drowned, he was transported or teleported to a place far away. And that place he was transported to was Nineveh. So when Jonah came on the scene, Jonah was like, look, I ain't going, I ain't telling people nothing. I want to see you destroy them. If I'm going to go in here and say you're going to destroy them if they don't repent, but then they repent and you don't destroy them, I'm going to look like a liar, right? So when he came, Nineveh was so quick to repent <clears throat> because of the Pharaoh or the demigod who was there, who had already encountered the great power. So faith isn't necessary. I would say faith is necessary. If you really understand what faith, if your faith is founded on actual facts, like I said, we got to unmuddy the waters here. We really have to unmuddy the waters. Yeah. You can say that we need to tap into our power as a God. You know, that kind of sounds a cliche as we're trying to unmuddy the waters. If you don't really have all the information, some people can kind of get sidetracked a little bit. Well, I'm a God because you have people doing that. Right. But I think you're, yes, you are, but you're missing some information. Right. And once you get the information, remember how it says in, um, it was it in Psalms. I think King David said it, but then it was repeated by JC in the new Testament. Um, he said, I said, ye are gods, right? Um, but it's also a, a scripture in there where it says, ye are gods, but you would die like men. You're going to understand that particular scripture after we read through the Sumerian text, right? And all of this stuff was just beginning to, it began to cut the lights on for me everywhere. So <clears throat> as we're growing, as we're going along, as we're growing, we need to just kind of Keep the information. Don't chuck anything out yet because it may be a, a missing piece, a link to something that we're going to come across, right? Everything that you count as rubbish right now, okay, just put it off to the side before until we can actually verify that it's something that we don't need and it is completely rubbish and then we can just drop it in the trash can. But for now, while we're trying to unmuddy the waters, everything that we're pulling out of the water, like that ibis bird, remember the, the Egyptian god Thoth, Thoth <clears throat> or Thoth? In ancient Egypt, he had he was he was the body of a man, but he had the head of an ibis bird, right? And he had a tablet. Remember what the ibis bird did, or what the ibis bird does? How it feeds itself? It is able to go down into it, its long beak, right? And that's what it, it represents. Thoth represents wisdom, right? That's why he has the head of the ibis bird. Because if you look at the ibis bird, how they feed themselves, they're able to go. In the dirtiest, muddiest of waters, right? Down in the mud, they're able to stick their beak down there and actually find food that feeds them. So it could be worms or something or or some kind of living thing down there that lives truth, that brings life to them down inside the muddy waters. That's why it was given a long beak so it can search for those uh, little morsels of nutrients that will feed itself, Right? So that's what we kind of we're we we kind of like at this point, right? We're going down into these these muddied waters to pull out truth, right? We're going into the places they tell us don't go, where they're hiding information, and we're pulling out the truth that they've been hiding in these 
occultic labeled places, right? But it's truth you need. It's pieces of the puzzle you need, and they've taken them from you, and they've hid them in places, put scary names on them, put guards at the door to keep you out. That's why you don't get it. And if you're scared to even look at the information, you're going to continue to lack information, and your story is going to be incomplete, and you're only going to grow so much, right? So I wouldn't say faith isn't necessary, right? You got to have a little bit of faith, a little bit of kahunas to be able to go into a dark place to pull something out that you know is in there that you need, right? Y'all just watch for me. I'm going to go in. If y'all scared to go, I'm going to go. But I'm going to let you know I'm going. If I ain't back in five minutes, somebody, two or your three, you come looking for me, right? I'm going to find this information. All right. Okay, so who was talking about his child? Him going into out-of-body experiences with his five-year-old son. Okay. My son, Eric, was about five years old at the time. Like most kids that age, he had frequent, spontaneous out-of-body experiences, O-O-B-E. We would go out-of-body together. I would go by and join him. We would have a blast. One time, we were exploring the oceans together when a huge whale approached us. As our bodies slipped easily through the whale, Eric's head, for some reason bumped against each of its ribs one after the next it frightened him a little typically we did not interact with our surroundings we came back immediately eric usually had total and clear recall of our nightly adventures we will often discuss them in the morning it was great fun for the both of us exploring the larger reality turned out to be an excellent father and son activity though perhaps somewhat unusual do not misunderstand me. I was not warping Eric's, Eric's tender perspective or jerking him out of body. At about five years of age, most children naturally and spontaneously have lots of OOBEs or out-of-body experiences. I was merely joining him so that we could go together. It was comforting and reassuring to Eric to have me along. He was going with or without me. I was able to structure their experiences to be both fun and educational, such as exploring the oceans. And you know what I found out while looking into a lot of this stuff? I was reading some of the stories of different people who was kind of leaving comments on some of the things I was that I had found on YouTube about out-of-body experiences. And there was this one, actually it was a few of them, but this one. This one lady, her and her daughter, she actually gave her story. She had a child when she was younger and a child was taken away from her. But how she grew up, she knew about these things and she would teach her daughter about them. So until her child became of age where they took their took her child from her, nightly they would meet in the astral realm, right? And they like they they never lost communication with one another, even though the the parents or whatever had taken a baby from her and gave the baby and was a girl, baby girl to somebody else to raise, the mom was still able to contact the baby. And as she became of age, they actually got together and talked about a lot of these things, you know. So it was, it was really, really interesting. So I, I clearly, I know out of body experiences are real because I've experienced them, you know. Oh, hold on. Joy said, but if we deny Yah, then we deny our very existence. I like that. It's true. We need to remember he has the authority to end life. I think sometimes people get consumed by the information they start assessing. Yeah, I do believe that. That's why it's like I try to help people. Just keep it together, people. We're still learning. Remember that there is the ultimate creator who created us. We not become better. We don't become better than him. It's not that we will ever not need him or that it comes a certain point where I'm a God now. I'm going about my way. It's never that, right? I like she said. I read it again. But if we deny y'all, then we deny our very existence. We need to remember he has the authority to end life. I think sometimes people get consumed by the information they start assessing, ac accessing and feel that they can do it by themselves. How can we deny the one who gave us the authority we have? Joy. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yeah. So with that mindset the proper understanding of that we can move ahead 
as we're gathering information, right? We ain't getting the big head, right? Oh, I'm a God, my G. I wish you would. Because I see some people doing it. I'm like, y'all getting off track. Yes, you come across some good information, but stay in class. Y'all leaving class early. Y'all leaving class too early, right? And like in Enoch, he said, you knew just enough to get yourself in trouble. And he, y'all was telling the watchers, right? The sons of God, the son, the sons of God, which were, look, the ain't you call them angels, right? You, Christians talk about it. They just call them different things. The angels, whatever you call, you call them an Anunnaki, angels, messengers, watchers, whatever you want to call them. We still talking about the same group of folk. Right? Um, but okay. All right, hold on. Instead of denying and discarding and discarding his experiences as foolish dreams, typical parental reaction, I was shaping and sharing them with him. He thought it was cool and looked forward to our outings. Eventually he was no longer a natural and our forays into the wild of non until I'm sorry. Eventually, he was no longer a natural and our forays into the wilds of non-physical non-physical matter reality. NPMR ended as easily and naturally as they had begun. He, by the way, now has an advanced degree in aeronautical engineering and to this day clearly remembers bumping his head on those whale bones. I have always been a sleepyhead. Nine to ten hours a night is about right for me. Yet, by spending so much time in altered states where my body was deeply relaxed, if not officially asleep, I got by on two or three hours of sleep per night, night after night after night, year after year. At work, I was exceptionally productive but becoming stranger. I was spending almost as much time in NPMR, non-physical matter reality, as I was in physical matter reality, PMR, and it showed. I soon earned a reputation for being absent, for being an absent-minded professor. PMR and NPMR seemed to blend into a continuum and I found I could live in both realities simultaneously. It was no longer a matter of leaving one and going to the other. Now it was merely a matter of shifting and splitting my focus. I lived and was continuously aware, sentient and conscious except when sleeping in both reality systems simultaneously and permanently. At first, I could only see quenchily, albeit quickly, switch between them. Then I learned to engage mentally in NPMR, in, yeah, non-physical matter reality, on one thing while carrying on a conversation and driving a car or a motorcycle at the same time. Most of the time, there was no confusion between reality frames, but now and then, for a few seconds, until I forced myself to differentiate between them and get my bearings, I was occasionally not sure which reality I was in. Both were equally real. They were just different and had different functions. I began to marvel at the mind's capacity for parallel processing. Listen, have y'all seen this movie? I want to say, I think it was Joy that mentioned, maybe it was Joy that mentioned it a few months back. I think it was, was it behind her eyes? I think it where they were having out of body experiences and, um, to get their bed, the guy that the guy had ended up in a mental institution and the girl who was also experiencing it was put in there too. But what they were experiencing was real. So she ran into this guy um, in the mental institution and who said for him, he, he had to catch himself to make sure um, which reality he was in. Like he had to stay, if I remember correctly, he did something counting with his hands or whatever to differentiate which reality he was in right because he was living a normal life but he was able to literally at will go in to see things and and see the future so to speak or manipulate situations by astral projecting getting information there was something that he did i, I forget he did with his hands to 
make sure or, or to verify which reality he was in because he did it so much that the worlds literally began to blend together. I, I think it was behind her eyes. If y'all know, share it. But I thought it was really good. But it was crazy. There's a lot of truth in that movie, if that's the right one. I think it's behind her eyes. If not, I'll correct myself. I know where to find it at. Um, but I think that's it. They were doing astral projecting. Um, and that, that same type of thing, if you're doing it a lot, especially if you're not communicating with the outside world, it's, easily to, it's easy to kind of merge the two worlds. I mean, they really should be merged anyway, but because we still kind of operating in this matrix so to speak you you kind of have to be aware of what you're doing you know um because it could be dangerous if you go to try something and you don't realize that you're actually in the physical world where you could die right if that makes sense yep i gotta i get hold on let me make myself a note i think it's behind her eyes i think I'm going to look it up. If it is, I'll share it. Y'all got to watch it if y'all haven't seen it. But it was crazy. Okay. Let's see. Now, it was merely a matter of shifting and splitting my focus. I lived and was continuously aware, sentient, and conscious, except when sleeping in both reality systems simultaneously and permanently. Yes. You see some of that stuff from Dr. Strange, too. Adaya, shalom, shalom. At first, I could only sequentially, albeit quickly, switch between them. Then I, earned, then I learned to engage mentally in non-physical matter reality on one thing while carrying on a conversation and driving a car or motorcycle at the same time. Most of the time, there was no confusion between reality frames. But now and then, for a few seconds, until I forced myself to differentiate between them and get my bearings... I was occasionally not sure which reality I was in. Both were equally real. They were just different and had different functions. I began to marvel at the mind's capacity for parallel processing. For one relatively short, about six months period, I was spending more time in non-physical matter reality than in physical matter reality. I was a space cadet and obviously needed a I was a space cadet and obviously needed a keeper. Luckily, being a physicist and maintaining high professional productivity, I could get by with being eccentric. Nevertheless, I soon realized that I needed to regain a better balance. With a little experimenting, the optimum balance was obtained. I remained eccentric but didn't need a full-time keeper to remind me of what was coming next in physical matter reality. With the two realities so completely intermixed, I began to notice connections between the two. One spring day while walking back to the office after lunch, I noticed that golden white foam was draped over the trees in a nearby park. A quick reality check indicated I was solidly focused in physical matter reality. Wow, I exclaimed with a mild surprise. That is really pretty, but what is that stuff? By now, I was so used to being amazed by the larger reality that what... I'm sorry, hold on. I skipped a whole line. By now, I was so used to being amazed by the larger reality that what was normally strange had become strangely normal. I studied the white foam. It had the texture of cotton candy. It connected all the trees into one large luminescent mass. It reminded me of a grove of cypress trees along the Gulf Coast loaded with glowing Spanish moss. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was was that the one I was talking about, Linda, behind her eyes? She said, behind her eyes is very good. They put the truth in series, movies, but we just see them as entertainment until we are awakened to truth. That's exactly what I was seeing yesterday. Remember how I was talking about? I was like, you know what? Now that I, when I watch a lot of these movies and TV shows, I'm almost certain that the creators of them know what's going on. And I'm not quite sure whether they're making fun of us because we can't see or 
they're really trying to give us messages coded in movies to help us wake up even further because those who are waking up will recognize it right and it almost seems that a lot of the movies are codes to those who are awaking which leads me to go start looking into some of the creators of some of the movies what is your life like what do you really do are you sending me codes do i need to go watch some of your other movies and what i found is that in some movies you watch they will give you hints to other movies to go watch. They may mention the name of a movie without telling you it's a movie. But if you know it's a movie, you're going to catch it. They may mention like, a, mention like a little scene or replay something that connects to another movie, which is like, like a, a national treasure. Another clue. <laughs> Where the dad didn't believe it. He's like, Dad, I'm telling you, this is real. Son, no, it's not. It's just another clue. They just getting us all wound up about nothing. All, all the nothing. All my child, none, none of this is real. Dad, yes, it is. I found the map. Look, son, listen. Look, and he had to tie his dad up. <laughs> he said, "Listen, Dad, when they come, just tell them we tied you up." It's like the dad wasn't a believer. All this time, the son was trying to tell. He's like, well, what about when grandpa was telling us, oh, your granddad was nuts? <laughs> and I'm kind of, you know, <laughs> using my own words here. But yeah, they sent each other codes, right? And I began to notice is there are different codes in a lot of it, especially Marvel movies, y'all. I am a big Marvel fan. I'm a big Marvel fan, right? Because I realized that there are a lot of clues and a lot of things that I see in Marvel movies. It gets my mind working and it causes me to go start researching something, maybe a term or something they said, which will lead me to more information. And then here I am today. I'm like, what have I done? What have I gotten myself into? You just can't leave well enough alone, can you, Pam? You just you just got to be nosy about everything. Now it's like I'm on a bow. I feel like I can't stop. I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta share this stuff with you. <laughs> that might be over exaggerating a little bit, but that's how I feel sometimes. It's like, yo, this rabbit hole is a lot deeper down here than what I originally thought. Hold on, I'll be back because there's a few tunnels down here. I'm going to go check them out. If y'all want to come, come on, bring some flashlights. Come help a sister out. But if not, give me a little while. I'll be back, right? Yo, it, Black, yo, there are so many clues in Black Panther, Uncle Nathaniel, especially, especially when we read the Sumerian text. While we're reading the Sumerian text, matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Y'all should go watch Black Panther again before we start reading these Sumerian texts, my G. Go watch it. Go watch it. Go watch it. Right? Listen. So you remember when uh, what's his what's his name? Michael B. Jordan. What's his name in there? Michael B. Jordan. <sighs> Y'all. When I tell you, when I when I read through, that was literally the first movie I thought about. Remember how they came, the the the, the brother, he was he was um he came down to earth. First of all, my G, they were the Anunnaki. They just named them something different. And now I see it all the way. Now that I'd have read the Sumerian text, this particular portion of the Sumerian text, you can see it everywhere. I was like, yo, this this is this is a story of the Anunnaki. They just not using the name Anunnaki. They gave it something else, but they clearly doing exactly what the ancient Sumerian text like. They know something, y'all. Let me finish reading this chapter. Because we are there. <laughs> we had an hour and a half. And we're gonna probably only get through this chapter today. I'm so excited to share this stuff with y'all. Hold on, hold on. Okay, and if you missed the beginning 30 minutes of this movie while I was going on this rant about what I read in the Sumerian text, if you came in late, when we stop, go back and start this video over. And it's literally the first 30, almost 30 minutes, like 28 minutes and some change. Listen to what I'm sharing with y'all about these ancient Sumerian texts. So when I start posting some of this stuff in the community section today and on Facebook, y'all gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Boy, I just, let me finish this. Okay. A quick reality check indicated I was solidly focused in PMR. Wow. I exclaimed with a mild surprise. That is really pretty. But what is that stuff? But what is that stuff? By now, I was so used to being amazed by the larger reality that what was normally strange had become strangely normal. 
I studied the white foam. It had the texture of cotton candy. It all it connected all the trees into one large luminescent mass. It reminded me of a grove of cypress trees along the Gulf Coast loaded with glowing Spanish moss. I thought it was very interesting, but had no idea what it was. I wonder if other people could see it. I made an effort to be obvious. I made an effort to be obviously looking at something. A few passers-by turned their heads to see what I was looking at and then went on about their business without any noticeable reaction. I knew that they must not have seen what I saw because what I was looking at was not so ho-hum in the least. It was massive and beautiful. If others could see it, there should have been a crowd forming, right? And that's something I noticed too. Sometime I'll see something, especially if it's something that it seems out of the ordinary to me. I learn how to just kind of keep myself together and pay attention to other people around because if somebody else is looking in the same direction, okay, I may not be the only one that's seeing this. Okay, maybe this is really real, right? So I learn how to do that simply by a couple of times. Carrie, is you losing your mind? No, you don't see that, you know. So. It's like, okay, let me just, let me observe everybody else. Does it look like anybody else is seeing what I'm seeing? And when they just go about their business like that, don't say, I'm like, okay, maybe this is something that I'm just seeing, you know, and I'll take notes of things. So this is what he talking about. So when he gets to this, I was like, oh my gosh, bro, I feel you. I know exactly what you're talking about. Look, listen, I made an effort to be obviously looking at something. A few passers-by turned their heads to see what I was looking at and then went on about their business without any noticeable reaction. I knew that they must not have seen what I saw because what I was looking at was not so ho-hum in the least. It was massive and beautiful. If others could see it, there should have been a crowd forming. I went back to work and looked out of my third-story window to see if the light foam was still there. It was. I closed the door to my office and I began to study the phenomenon I was experiencing. I discovered that I could make it disappear and reappear by adjusting the state of my consciousness. Within a few days, I noticed that everything living had this fuzzy light around it and that there were strands of this non-physical cotton candy connecting everything to everything. Y'all seen the movie Avatar? Remember the... Uh, the tree, not not Avatar like Airbender, but actually the movie Avatar with the blue people. Remember the tree Awa, right? And how everybody is connected to Awa, which is actually Yahweh spelled another way, right? But we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna get into that right now. <laughs> Yo, y'all gotta go watch Avatar too. The actual movie, the Avatar with the blue people. Yo, okay. Within a few days, I noticed that everything living had this fuzzy light around it and that there were strands of this non-physical cotton candy connecting everything to everything. What about inorganic matter, I wonder? I move I move my attention to buildings, telephone poles, and power lines. To my astonishment, there was a smaller, more uniform, close-cut, off-white light around everything. The light around the power lines was in motion and bushier than what was around the poles. I was incredulous, and I looked repeatedly to make sure. I shook my head, then I closed my eyes and opened them again. What I saw remained the same. I had hypothesized this odd light as some representation of life energy. Buildings, telephone poles, and wires with life energy? I knew I had to throw that idea out. The light around the wires danced. I immediately wondered what I would see around an electrical appliance. Would inside things have an aura too, or was it related to sunlight? I looked at the clock on the wall. It not only had light around it, but the light was highly structured and in steady motion. I looked at my programmable calculator and saw a finely structured complex pattern. I turned it on and set it to work. The patterns changed and scintillated as, the, as it worked. Now I was amazed all over again. What was I looking at? 
within a few days, I noticed that people had auras around them that had changed and scintillated as their owners talked to me about important things in their lives. A movie theater not only contained ordinary people, but also rows of swirling colored forms. I could turn it I could turn all of it. Hold on. I could turn all of it or any of it on or off by shifting the state of my consciousness. Years later, I will only need to shift my intent. The connections linking living things became visually obvious. I could literally see that everything was connected. Remember when well, you may hear people say we're all connected. Separation is clear. It, it, it's an illusion. We are not separated. We're going to get into the science of this, right? And if you're familiar with the, the actual avatar or the last airbender, not the blue people, the actual animated cartoon airbender with the earth, wind, fire, water, air, all those doing like the jiu-jitsu karate stuff, that that right there they actually that video that i showed you with the it was like a little 10 minute video where the ancient sage was teaching ang how to open his chakras and he actually mentioned that he said so the 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 four nations he said it's an illusion they're not separate but they're all one right and the science of this will actually help you understand that better of how we're all one and how we all are connected all right a movie theater not only contained ordinary people, but also rows of swirling colored forms. I could turn it, I could turn all of it or any of it on or off by shifting the state of my consciousness. Years later, I will only need to shift my intent. The connections linking living things became visually obvious. I could literally see that everything was connected. Even inanimate things such as clocks and computers had their complex moving non-physical energy pattern. This same experience did not happen to Dennis. Perhaps he did not immerse himself in the exploration of non-physical matter reality <clears throat> and its theory to the extent that I did. I was extreme in my dedication to this effort. We often grew in different ways at different times and had usually eventually ended up with similar experiences. We were in this thing together and I had discussed my experiences seeing energy forms with Dennis as they happened. One day, he bought me a group of he bought me a group photograph of five people and dropped it on my desk. These are all Soviets, he said. One of them is supposed to be leading one of them is supposed to be leading research and psychic activity in the Soviet Union. Which one is the psychic? I never looked at pictures in this way before, but with focused intent, their auras blossomed up exactly as they did with flesh and blood people. That was fascinating, I thought. Conscious intent is everything. Space and time are not fundamental. Wow. Which one is the psychic? Dennis asked again. I looked back at the picture. Sure enough, one had a much more developed energy body, particularly around and above his head than the others. This one is different from the others, I said, pointing to one of the men in the picture. I'm not sure what the difference means yet, I cautioned. But this one is definitely different from the others clairvoyance was still a new experience and i did not know the significance of much of what i saw at this point i was more into formulating basic connections and had not thought about auras having unique meaning dennis looked at me and grinned that's the one he said with enthusiasm i was surprised dennis knew the answer this was a test i didn't mind actually i was pleased another data point was in and I had learned something valuable and amazing about time and space and being a subset of a larger reality. I have so much to learn, I thought to myself, suddenly overwhelmed by the unfav unfathomable depth and complexity of reality. Dennis went back to his office. I took a deep breath and wondered what would happen next. Where was all this going? What else was out there waiting to be discovered? I felt small, 
humbled by the enormity of my ignorance. It was clear I had barely begun to scratch the surface of something so immense and fundamental that I could barely imagine it. At the same time, I was excited by the possibilities and determined to discover whatever I could about the nature of reality. I am a physicist and science and discovery are my passions. I was born wanting to know why and how. After 22 years of continuous education, I realized that I had studied only one small sub subset of the natural world. I was young. My learning seemed to be accelerating and reality was far cooler, more complex, and more interesting than I could have ever imagined. To someone like me, it doesn't get any better than this. I was energized to discover I was energized to discover any truth that would yield to my experimentation. And that, my beautiful people, is where we're going to stop today. We're gonna to pause right here. Because my intro was so long about the about the ancient Sumerian text, right? It was so good. Y'all got to go back. I'm about to share this stuff with y'all. I'm just super excited to get it out so y'all can start looking. Because <laughs> a few people text me, hey, what would you mention the other day? Send me, send me something. Send me something. <laughs> so I, I sent a few people a couple things. I sent them this and a couple other things that I'm going to share with y'all as well. So we can pause right here. Y'all y'all got to get into it. If y'all are avid Torah lovers... Y'all should know where they pulled the Torah from, right? I myself, right? So just go back and you can hear my passion all the way in the beginning of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope y'all enjoyed the reading for today. We will not be here tomorrow because we observed. Oh, and look, I'm about to say it. We, we observing the Sabbath tomorrow and there's a good little chunk in there about the Sabbath. I'm like, get, get out here. Look. So we, like I said, it's my duty. It is my duty to read these ancient Sumerian scripts, all 14 tablets to y'all. Soon as we get done with Genesis in a few days, we're going to start it. All 14 tablets. We're going to read it, right? But I'm going to give you the link to uh, the book where you can, if you want to start listening to it, like right now. I'm going to give you the link. But remember, the girl who recorded it on YouTube, it's clear. She 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 just straight read the 14 tablets. But the original translator of it has a synopsis and like an intro to each tablet that she didn't read. I noticed that after I got done going through the original one, I found her. So I was like, wait, what? She missing information here. Why would she skip that? You know, so... If you like listening to a woman, just know it's real clear. Her voice is pleasant to listen to, um, but she does skip the synopsis and the translation of it. Um, but if you want to listen to the translation of it, you're going to actually have to pay for it on Amazon. You ain't paying me, you're paying Amazon for it, just like I had to pay for it, right? And it got the paperback, the audible version where they read it to you, and the Kindle version. I got all of them, right? I got the Kindle. I listened to the whole audio over the last three days. It's about... The one I told you about uh, is eight hours long, and I couldn't just sit and listen to it back to back because, you know, I got a family and I just kind of breaking it up. But it took me three days to get through the eight hours of listening to it. Um, but I'll share that if you want to get that. So, OK, Joy, you about to DM, DM me again. <laughs> OK, but all right, y'all. So let's go. Uh, yeah, Alicia, girl, yo, sign in my audible right now, my G. Go listen to it. It's uh, um, it's the uh, the lost book of Inky, right? That's one of the gods from that time where, and it actually in the beginning, it's going to give you an overview of everything of some of the other Sumerian texts and how it's like um, different people, but actual one of the one of the gods so to speak is given a first-hand account and he has a scribe i forget the scribe's name but he's listed in there as well and he look yo look some of the things you know how you read in revelation i'm like yo bro they is not friggin' slick they ain't slick right some of the stuff you you uh read in revelation you also hear it throughout here clearly we know that everybody's just borrowing from everybody everybody's stealing words of everybody right I feel myself getting heated and worked up again about this. Just go back to the uh, 
Not yet, Joy. I'm I'm waiting for them to respond to me. I'm gonna send them another email that I get permission to share the curriculum. Not yet. I don't have a phone number. We just been conversing back and forth through email and um like the the live videos. But I'm just like, okay, is y'all is y'all like not seeing my question here? Y'all not seeing my? I know somebody seen my question. I don't want to be like a bugaboo. Hey man, answer my question. You know, I'm trying I'm trying to be reserved and stuff. But I didn't get permission yet to share the curriculum. Still working on still working on it right but until we do we can bring in this other stuff so we can see exactly how our torah was compiled right i'm not saying do away with it right because it still is st i'm just saying you just got to hear where it came from you just got to hear you got to hear where it came from and now i understand there's this one guy on youtube has a massive following right black guy right black guy i ain't gonna say his name I'm mean, not that that has anything to do with it, but I came across and waking up, <laughs> waking up, I just kind of came across him and I listened to him for a little bit, but I, he just hollers so much to me. And y'all, y'all may know who I'm talking about. It's like everything he say, he's just hollering. I'm like, geez, can you just like talk us through it? Why you got to, I can tell he's passionate, but literally his whole video, some of them be like three or four hours. I'm like, how? Are your vocal cords even standing? Because every video you do, you are hollering, right? And it, it may just be me that think he's hollering. He's a he's a he's a big guy. His voice could just be big, and it's probably just his voice that just carries. But sometimes when he actually gets excited and raises his voice, it's like, bro, this is this is too much. I gotta turn it down. Some of the information he gives is really good. And there were some things that I heard him say. Uh, a couple years ago when I came across, I was like, man, what is you talking about? You know, because he was talking about some things about the Torah, right? He said, you don't even know who really wrote that, do you? So I'm like, well, what you talking about? God wrote it. He gave it to Moses, right? So I'm listening to him because I learned, okay, hold my, my criticisms until I have the full matter. I see it out. Some stuff was hitting me down in my shine. I'm, not. I'm like, bro, you lying, but I'm going to keep listening. I'm going to see what you're saying because you could be tying this into something else. But now, some of what I heard him say that I took issue with with him for a long time, you know, now it kind of makes sense exactly what he was saying. So now I'm wondering what I, I can see. I don't know. I'm like, well, why don't you just come out and tell the people that I get that maybe because of the people who's following him, they may not actually be ready for it yet. Because I can tell that they're bringing out older manuscripts and stuff. They're not necessarily reading them. They're just telling you about them. They're reading like little snippets from it. But I'm like, bro, read the whole thing. Um, but now I understand what he meant about um, the comments he made about the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to repeat it because I ain't going to repeat what he said because you may not have all the information that I have and it could throw you off. But I understand what he was saying when he talked about the God of the Old Testament. Now, he completely believes in Yah, but there are some things he took issue with. He said, they, this is not original text here. This is like some this is like another God, so to speak, or whatever. And I clearly understand what he was saying. But now that, I, like I said, like I've read, like now that I've read the Sumerian text, there's a lot of things from a lot of different people that I've listened to over the years. And I'm wondering if they have read the Sumerian text because they have pieces of it. I'm like, I want now I'm wondering, have you read it? Do you have it? Do you know it exists? Or you they just kind of bringing in the subtext that are still being pulled and created from the Sumerian text. It's like, guys, y'all have to go go back a little bit more, even from the ancient uh Kemet stuff, right? Because even some of the ancient Kemet stuff, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like, I, like I said the other day, I was like, I thought I was woke. But now I realize there was another level to being woke. You found out more information. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So we're going to go back, like I said in the beginning, and we're going to read the most ancient text. As soon as we get done with Genesis, we're going to start reading um, and it's labeled the, the lost book of ink, the lost book of inky, right? Yes. Yeah, a matrix inside the matrix. My G yo, y'all seen, Rever um, was it resurrections matrix? Now, some people say people got their opinions. 
But if they're not looking at it with the spiritual eyes and they don't remember what's happened in the previous three, they're like just not going to get Matrix 4. Like, it was like the best choice. This rabbit hole. Yeah, but let me let me go ahead and end this. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep talking about this. But I wanted to tell you in there we're gonna we're gonna get uh it's like everything what we've read over these last few years bringing in this other stuff reading Jasher the Book of Enoch all these other things that kind of go with the Bible Legends of the Jews you'll find all of these in this particular um these particular fourteen tablets right we're gonna hear about Noah we're gonna hear about Abraham towards the end as it gets to the end all the stuff that happened previous to the flood like a lot of the stuff we read in the book of Enoch when the flood was about to happen the prophecy that went out Lamech is in there they talk about Lamech like all of this uh, Lamech Methuselah Enoch although they changed their name but you can if you recognize a story you're going to recognize all of them Enoch Lamech Methuselah Noah um, got during Jacob and Esau, like all of them, right? They just have different names. Some of the names are really close. Like Methuselah's name is really close. Yes. I'm going to share the Sumerian text, the translated one. Um, uh, it's called the, the lost book of Enki, right? That's the title of it. But within that book is the translated 14 tablets from that particular Sumerian text. I have some other ones that I haven't gone through yet. Um, and some that I started, I'm just kind of putting it all together. So, but, all right. That being said, let me go ahead and end this so I can give y'all this, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. So, if you want to listen to it, go ahead and listen to it, download it, whatever. But I'm telling you, you're going to start having some questions. You're going to start having some questions. And I ain't here to get you all discombobulated. We're trying to uncombobulate you. <laughs> if that's even a word, right? We got to... We got to go through this. Okay, where did this originate? What's true? What's not true? And we just got to look at everything, right? Realizing that there is a creator. Clearly, we know he exists. We communicate with him. He communicates with us. But we have to unravel um, the texts that have been written and shared and stuff. Oh, Ezra. Ezra, you remember Ezra, the, the, the rewriting of the books? We're going to hear about Ezra. His name, not Ezra in the Sumerian text, though. Um, Moses, all oh, you. If you're familiar with the biblical stories and the extra biblical stories, you're going to recognize them when we read over them in the ancient Sumerian text because that's where they were pulled from. And that's how these stories were created, y'all. All right. So that being said, let's go ahead and, and do this blessing real quick. Bella went upstairs with my things. So I ain't even going to call her. So let me do this. And I'm going to start sharing this stuff with y'all. The blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and will guard us with a hedge of protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us, bringing order, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahuwah will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon us and he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete and they shall put my name upon the children of israel and i will bless them all right beautiful people i love y'all give me a few minutes while i get this up for y'all so y'all can start looking into it and remember we're gonna start reading this in a few days soon as we done with genesis we're gonna start reading this sumerian translated text right and it's the ancient text was written in cuneiform yeah cuneiform but anyway you're gonna learn a little bit about that too so but all right y'all i love y'all i see y'all tuesday back here face to face but be looking for some of my posts in the community section and on facebook i'm gonna share it with you all right so i love y'all see y'all back here tuesday morning 7 15 a.m Eastern Standard Time. Peace. You're welcome, Joyce.